magtarang araw ay Maya Maya Maginara, Cannibal Mermaid YouTuber. And today, we are having another folklore storytelling day. We will be talking about religious tales or that will send us to hell. I don't know. They're all very uh, My running theory about Philippine folk tales that are about religion is what we did in order to keep our beliefs after the Spanish invaded us because we just replaced hello well, is we replaced all of our folklore creatures with Mary and Jesus and other such things just to you know keep that part of the culture while being religious until it did a full 180 and now we're just religious country now. look at me I'm so religious I'm a nun I'm a nun you know this background it's an Augustine church I think <laughs> It's just a very... I just rendered San Agustin. Not... Like, you know? Get past the uncanny valley of having a VTuber in front of me. Very... 3D. Oh no, wait. Let me get the source for the Amanamin Lo-Fi. Oh, where was it? There we go. I'm gonna... Gonna have to put the audio credits for this one. Yeah, it's Catholic. There we go. That's our audio credit. That's Emmanuel Fabelius. Ama namin lo-fi remix. <laughs> Do you feel holy now? Do you feel holy now? You guys feel holy? Do you like praying? Do you feel like going to church? Parang gusto ko mag-pray per casual pray lang. Like, yo God, kamusta naman araw mo? Yo bro. Wait, didn't they try to have like... Wasn't there a soap opera na yung tawag nung bata dun sa kay Jesus is bro? Like, bro? Bro, please save my family, bro. Oh, pareho yung itsura ng San Agustin and Baras. Okay, I'm going to have to check kung anong photo yung nakuha ko. I need search for San Agustin. Act check. Act uh, For the first time, I actually took a photo that isn't from someone that I personally know. So. I don't know a lot of religious people. Also, can you hear the ambient sounds of Edsa? I'm <laughs> so our first thing. First tale for today is Juan Miseria and Ibatan. Ibatan would be the indigenous group that live in Batanes. If you remember those people, if you see photos of... Oh, I think it was the one where Gerald Anderson was Ako Budoy. No, I was thinking of like the one with the little boy, uh, San Santino, but... Oh my god, Ako Budoy was... I have a friend with an autistic brother and she was like, I hate that, ano, I hate that show so much. My cutting out? My cutting out, wait lang, kasi medyo malayo siya. Sorry. I'm gonna put it a little closer. Tapos sorry na lang kapag natamaan siya ng libro. Okay? Pa cut out pa rin ba? Hello? Hi, Dai the Hermit! We're about to start our first religious story from Batanes. I mean, I say religious because it has Jesus Christ and Saint Peter and Satan as the characters, but it's weird. Closer, my closer to God. Okay. Let's pray then. Let's start our first story. It's Juan Miseria. So, I'm covering my... Oh, ox na? Ox na. Okay. I'm carrying a very heavy book. I'm so sorry. I think I've shown photos of what my books look like on Twitter. They're big. They're big. Sana all tinatamaan ng libro. Hello? Anong fetish yan? Please pray. Pray the sin away. Wait, what? Okay, so Juan Miseria. Let's just start with Juan Miseria so we can all be saved. <laughs> uh, Juan Miseria was a blacksmith and a cobbler. One day, he was asked to repair the sandals of Jesus Christ by Saint Peter. So he accepted the job in exchange for the Lord's heavenly rewards. When confronted by Christ, he asked for three magical powers because... Apparently, Jesus does that. 
Jesus gives you magical powers. Anyway, Juan Miseria asked for three things from Jesus like he's a fucking genie. So, one, that anyone who stole fruits in his orchard would get stuck to the trees and would not be able to get down unless he grants them permission. Two, a magical power for his bench which would make it impossible for anyone who sat on it to get away from it without his permission. Wow, he really, really likes giving permission for things. And three, a strong magical box capable of containing anything he wished to put in no matter how great the quantity and that nothing put there could get away without his permission. And Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ, granted Juan Miseria all of these gifts. Why? We don't know. It's Jesus Christ. Consent is sexy. Once again, Juan Miseria, a tale from Batanes. <laughs> Juan Miseria, now he had been pestered regularly by devils, including Satan. Yeah, the Satan. Juan Miseria is very, a very famous guy. He gets Jesus and Satan, okay? To accept magical powers from hell in exchange for his soul. It was during the visit of the archdevil that his retinue of devils fed on the fruits of the orchard of Juan. And it was also on one such visit that the powers Christ gave him began to prove their worth. A riot exploded at the orchard as the devils burst into demonic curses and whining upon discovering that they have been trapped. Satan too was beside himself with misery, bargaining for his liberty because he had sat and gotten stuck to the magical bench. Satan, not very smart in this story. So Juan, being a fucking sadomasochist, took tremendous pleasure in the torment of the infernal intruders until he exacted from them a vow never to pester him again. But Satan still had his pride to save, for the conflict between him and Juan had become a contest. Nakakontest mo si Satanas. Juan thought it was unwise to give himself up to anyone less powerful than he. He found no reason to put the devil to the test so he agreed to accept the wager on his soul. If Satan could put all the devils in hell in the small box that Jesus gave him. Uh, Satan has no idea that it's a Jesus box so. Satan promptly ordered all of his devils to enter into the box. Finally Juan had to argue, hey Satan, hey Satan. Bet you can't go inside the box with all of your devils, reasoning that, you know, Satan is also a devil, so it's a part of the deal. He has to go inside the box. Get inside the box, Satan. Amen. Hello, Klisu Akibara. Welcome to the stream. And so Juan forced Satan into the box and that his promise would not be fulfilled if he did not enter into the box itself. So... Safe inside the box, the devil soon discovered they were tricked. Even the archdevil Satan could not get out of it. And Juan Miseria, who once again is starting to be the biggest sadomasochist in this story, floated over his box and the confusion of the devils whom he tormented with beating and insults. God damn. Finally, the devils. Having been thoroughly humiliated and terrified and not knowing what other powers and tricks Juan might have, agreed to cease bothering him thereafter. Juan opened the box and the devils departed in great haste. Terror. And so evil is back in the world. Juan, what the fuck did you do? Now Juan, Juan's just a man. He never asked for mortality, so it eventually had to die. And he found himself at the gate of St. Peter. The heavenly gatekeeper recognized him and regretfully informed him that he had no more reward in heaven because he already got his reward on earth. You know, those three gifts. Those three gifts were his reward. Now that he has his reward, GG, well played. You get to stay on earth now. I mean, you get to stay. You're banned from heaven now. And so the gate was closed against Juan Miseria. Okay, so heaven won't accept him. Juan decided to go to hell. <laughs> Why? I don't know. 
He came to a huge threatening gate. He knocked and discovered that certain precautions had lately been introduced by the infernal porters. Souls seeking admission to the infernal chambers had to be properly identified. Juan promptly identified himself as Juan Miseria and the, gay, the name was passed on with terrifying recognition until it reached the depth where Satan was. Satan roared the internal command to keep the gates shut against the man so he can't go to heaven, can't go to hell because Satan hates him too. Juan crawled to his eternal destination in abject misery. A place that is neither hot nor cold. It's not the good place. It's not the bad place. It's a neutral place. Having neither committed to God nor to the devil. And that is the end of the tale of Juan Seria. And also, like, these are on how weird Philippine folklore at the Oh, thank you, Kurisu. Some people have been calling me that. I gonna own it at this point how do you like the lo-fi beats also is the mic still cutting off have, have a monitor it's okay now it's okay and that's our tale of one miseria check what your story we got not gonna lie, I'm not well prepared this time because COVID. Okay, I'm gonna put up a have, have three types of stories out. It's better now than before. Hello, hero! Welcome to the stream. We're actually talking about holy stuff right now. We're not sinning against God. We're all going to church. We're going to church. We are in church. Okay, let me just set up a poll on. Sin tayo samahan kita. Um, Anash, not in front of Jesus. Okay, outside, outside, at the back of the church. Let's go. <laughs> now, not now. There is Yo, what? What? We only serve good say so content in fight of How do I set up a hole of which uh Sorry, hindi ko kasi stream manager ko. Vibing to ama ma namin. Hello, Angel Coffee. Are you coffee? You guys like the sick beats of ama namin lo-fi by Emmanuel Fabelia? I just found it on YouTube actually. Oh no, who shared the photo on... On share the photo on. To turn off Facebook with Facebook is murder on. It murders your memory. I don't know why Facebook is. Oh, thank you for the audio credit, Illuminante. we really like Mama Mary in this this country. Once again, I have a theory that we just replaced a lot of our goddesses with generic Mama Mary. Oh, 
All right, I'm starting a poll right now. Oh no, I'm cutting off again. I think that might be the internet at this point. I didn't move the mic. Your honor, your honor, I didn't do anything. I might actually like legitimately listen to this when I study. Look guys, if you all go to the brig at some point, I'm going to start a playlist of just lo-fi religious beats. They're actually pretty good. <laughs> There's like an, a lo-fi cordero ng just that I listen to to concentrate. <laughs> Why are we at church? Because we are talking about religious folklore for this day. Yeah, it's it's frame lag. Oh no. Oh no. Yep. It might be OBS. I swear to God my internet is okay. And my model is also okay on my end. Sorry. OBS be like that for me for the past few days. I've also had friends who have had all what else? I have friends like Halia and BB who've had their models like conk out the last few days. So Your Honor, it's not my fault anymore. <laughs> Your Honor. Your Honor. OBS is cursing me, I know, right? I just installed and reinstalled it in the car. OBS refused to let me look at my poll. There we go. Some girl named Maria and Anthony. They're kind of wait. Yeah, version 28 update. It screwed me over, but I'm still you. I thought the hotfix would actually do stuff. It's not, not doing much. Okay, the Maria got caught off. Where is Where are those door? My god, the Maria tale is four pages long. Why did I do it? It's early, we just need to complain to Ob it's probably. It's only twenty-eight. Maybe I'll go back to twenty-seven after this stream. Maybe I'll go. I already also updated my drivers. I don't know what's wrong with the OBS anymore. I am seeing how well I move on OBS compared to how slow I move. It's weird. It's weird. I'm still at version 27.2.4. Hello, Asad VT. That is a good choice. I might go back. I really might just go back. I mean, uninstalling and installing kept all of my scenes, so hopefully it will do that for 7. Becomes a strobe light when open. I've had, I've heard bad things and about the new version, so you haven't. That is a good, <laughs> that is a good decision. I'm jealous. Okay, so the poll, some girl named Maria won. Oh, sorry, title. Let's go for stories about actual people. Maria the Miser. There we go. Aya. Maria the Miser or Maria Kuripot is a story from the Tagalog region. So it's from Luzon. It's from the number one uh, language group in the Philippines because because fuck that Filipino is mostly Tagalog anyway that is a hot take that got me kicked out of Filipino class I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> downgrade to latest version 27 because Twitch API got killed by the other versions okay I will but first let's pray this is a tale, a cautionary tale about Maria the Miser. When Maria was still alive, she lived in her pleasant house in the middle of wide grounds with the beautiful gardens and trees. And she was very rich and her life was constant pleasure, sana all. 
He had not yet reached 40 years old when she died. Okay, I, I'm not jealous of her anymore. That seems like a short life. All of her wealth she d divided between her sister and the church. She didn't remember that her neighbors and her friends were also poor, so like, fuck him. The sister who was- oh wait, wait, no, that's- that's- that's not a good thing to say as a nun. Uh, she didn't remember that her acquaintances and her neighbors were poor, so God bless them. God bless them all. The sister who was left had a series of masses said during the seven days after Maria's death, so that Maria's soul may be admitted by Saint Peter at the gates of heaven. When Maria was still alive, she was known far and wide for being very, very greedy and for being very, very, yeah, greedy. That's avarice, right? That's greed. Uh, she herself rarely had masses said or made offerings of candles. How dare she? And when beggars asked her for money, she had them driven away and didn't give them anything. Oh, also she had them chased by dogs, so that's worse than just not giving them money. She forced her slaves to work without pay, and she gave them ra rations that didn't have meat or didn't have vegetables. They on she only gave them boiled rice with salt. And so, and still she demanded of her peons whenever they went home to bring back chickens, eggs, young pigs, vegetables, or fruits to give to her. These th did not make the peasants. Uh, di di oh, peasants, no, I said. Uh, I can read. So. These peons, Maria's slaves, Maria's underlings, Maria's followers, they did not give these presents out of love for Maria, but as a kind of bribe, so that they might not be partially treated during their stay in her house. But when Maria went to the country, her workmen, she appropriated without saying a word and without paying for it. Everything she saw in their house that took her fancy, so she's also a fucking kleptomaniac. When, for instance, she saw at her workman's house a new basket, tray, sieve, sack, mat, pot, cup, dipper, brazier, or other household utensil, she took it and carried it off to her house. When she could not make use of the things that she'd taken, she sold them. She acted with the same way about animals that belonged to her servants. In this way, she had quickly grown rich because people still bought from her. Apparently, this seems like a society problem. Okay, let me just read what Hawaiian Pizza said. Yeah, we're like Ichibro, like Sugoides and Luzon Pare. We're like Oishides. Nah. Big facts right there, bro. Sheesh, you're doing konyoni. There we go. They're they're really trying to make Konyo Nihongo a thing. <laughs> Welcome. Wasn't that because of you guys? Isn't that like you and Marcel talking? I I don't want to think about it too hard. I'm already ha I'm already struggling like balancing Bisaya Tagalog and English in my head. I don't need to add Nihongo to that. Okay. So anyway, Maria, Maria, who's fucking dead, when she was at oh wait. I'm supposed to say fucking maria god bless her has been dead for three days and so her sister were was at her house spending the period in mourning one evening when she was walking in the garden she came to the side of the well that was in the yard she was surprised for from the depths of the well she heard someone call her name she turned her head toward the well and there she again clearly heard the calling, although she could see no body whatever. <laughs> Welcome to the black hole of lo-fi religious remixes, happy bread. I hope you enjoy your stay. The voice said, My sister, I am Maria. I'm paying now for my life of avarice, selfishness, and cruelty. I am here in the Lord's place of punishment for all sinners inside the well for some odd reason. If it may be, 
do not follow my example, but seek some means to save me from the boiling oil here, which is now my place of dwelling. Her sister was so grieved then and went at once to the priest to ask what this means. How can she re rescue her very greedy, very evil sister from hell? The priest advised her to go to a certain town where there was a wonder-working image of St. Peter. This image of St. Peter talked with people and advised various means of getting into heaven. This was its miracle. Hello, Jay. We're talking about religious tales. And to recap, Maria the Miser is a very, very evil woman who just died and she just told her sister, Hey, what's up, sister? I'm in hell. Don't follow my example. And now her sister, who doesn't have a name, is looking for this miraculous image of San Pedro so that she could save her sister from hell. Why? I don't know. Power of sisterly love, I guess. So, Maria's sister went immediately to the town where stood the miraculous Saint Peter. When she got there and talked with St. Peter himself, she told him the whole story. She said that her sister had told her that her avarice, her selfishness, and cruelty had caused her to be thrown into hell. Oh no! In that case, said St. Peter, who also said, Hello, I'm St. Peter. Moi moi cute. Na, 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 na. <clears throat> In that case, said St. Peter. Find you but one single person, animal, or plant that was the object of an act of kindness on the part of your sister. When you have managed to find it, come back to me and I shall give you a means to rescue your sister from eternal damnation. Yes, nagmoe moe kyun si St. Peter. He's very up to date with internet memes. Maria's sister went home to their town at once, and there she inquired of all the townspeople which of them owed any debt of gratitude to her sister, or which of them had been treated well or kindly spoken to by her. But, well, that's a fucking awkward question. See, she was fucking evil. I'm not supposed to say fucking, oh no, that was a terrible question. God bless all of them. And no one was able to answer. The animals also of the neighbors and on Maria's own grounds were interrogated by this sister. But she found none that had been done a kindness by her. One dog, a creature of skin and bones, said to her, Bark! One afternoon I was very hungry, Bark. I found a bone in her yard, Bark. I seized it and was carrying it off, Bark, when she saw me. Bark. He had me chased at once, Bark. And when I dropped the bone, she had it buried in the ground, Bark. Was that an act of kindness, Bark? So even the dog hates Maria. The grief of Maria's sister became much greater, and her hope of rescuing her sister from hell was gradually failing. Yes, the dog is us. Uh, we cast Mion as the dog. Abba, abba, alkron. Nandito ka ba sa simbahan para magdasal? Good boy. Good boy. Okay, so the grief of Maria's sister became much greater. And her hope of rescuing her sister from hell was gradually failing because no one could ever say any kind word about this evil, evil woman. She began to question the plants in her sister's yard. She was getting very desperate. God bless her. She took one by one all the gourds, all the pumpkins, cucumbers, chili peppers, melons, sinkamas, peanuts, eggplants, cowpeas, onions, and garlic, and the other vegetables, the entire bahay kubo. She did not find among them that which she sought. So she went to the trees. Ah, uh, surprise. It's because... Jesus granted you modship powers, Alcron. Uh, 
So Maria's sister went through the trees. She made she asked questions one after the other of the chico, anona, custard apple, mabolo, grapefruit, orange, talandan, kasoy. But here to her labor gave no result. Only the group of the garden plants she had not yet questioned. And if here she did not find what she sought, there would be nothing for her to do about the punishment her sister was undergoing. She went to them all, but there were none who could say that they had received any act of kindness from Maria. Ayo. At the very last, the sister went to the side of the well, and there she questioned all the blades of grass. When night came, there was only one head of grass which she had not questioned. Full of fear and hope, she approached it. She asked the blade of grass which grew by the side of the well. When my sister was alive, did she ever do you an act of kindness? Oh, your sister? answered the blade of grass. Yes. It was she who gave me new life. Last summer, my blades were all withered and I was near dying. But your sister bathed one evening on the side of this well. It was very hot, but she would bathe here more. As she bathed, the water sprinkled on me so that I grew again and my withered blades became fresh once more. Thank you, Maria Batwater. Maria's sister could not contain the joy which arose in her. And that very night, she returned to St. Peter. St. Peter gave her a rosary and told her to go home and to hang this rosary down the well. She was to call Maria and to let her take hold of the rosary. By this means, her sister could be rescued from eternal damnation. It's a chill. She went home at once, and hardly was the sun shining when she came to the yard of the deceased Maria. She approached the well, led down the rosary, and called her sister. Maria emerged from under the water and took hold of the rosary. Maria's a zombie, apparently. How did they not give this detail early on? Her sister began to pull at the rosary and she was asleep. As she was being rescued, some other souls also wanted to escape from hell. So they all took hold of Maria's feet when they saw that she was getting rescued from damnation. But when only Maria's feet were still underwater, she shook her two feet so that the souls who had held on to her feet had to let go. Yeah, so she just kicked the other damn souls back into hell. And so when she did this, the rosary broke and she at once fell into the well. And from that, Time on, her sister was never again able to communicate with her. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what this reminds me of really, really soon. <laughs> the sister went back to St. Peter and told him what had happened. But St. Peter said that there's no longer anything that they could do to save her sister from hell. And that is the story of Maria the Miser, which now that I've finished reading it is very, very Similar to a tale by uh, Japanese author Ryunosuke Akutagawa. Yeah, this one tale about... It's called The Spider's Thread. It's about this one thief who went to hell. But because he was very, very kind to this one spider in his life, the spider decided to throw a small thread so that he could climb up. But because he got mad that other people were pulling him down... He kicked those people and the spider's thread broke. Yeah, yeah, it's the spider thread thingy. Yep, that's the tale. The Filipino version is Maria the Miser. Hello, Moko. Welcome to the street. Are you enjoying the word of our Lord, our sick beats? Amanamin lo-fi by Emmanuel Fabelia. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the stream. We are talking about religious tales right now. Alright, this is our audio credit. Hello. Thank you po for the shorties. Yan na ba tawag natin dyan? 
or audio credit for the Ama Namin Lo-Fi. If you're like Habi Bread, then you've probably already fell in a black hole of religious lo-fi remixes. There are a lot. They're all very chill. How can God hate this? God. God. They're good. The Ama Namin remixes are good. It's the real uh, It's yeah yeah it's Amanamin Lofi. Let me make a people for my stories again. Uh, Oh, what did I press? Let me just... And let me... It starts now! There we go. I'm gonna hydrate gonna drink actual water and not alcohol because we are in God's kingdom right now and I'm pretty sure Jesus didn't turn his blood into rum he turned it into a boy yet I will get wine tomorrow probably for prayer reasons I swear I swear to our Lord and Savor, Fishus Christ. Oh, I wonder who could have voted for Our Lady of Dinagat. Hello, hero. Welcome back. Are you here? To no to pray. Also, please ignore the scales that are beside my neck. It... Oh, that's you. Oh, nice. Actually, I haven't read any of these stories because I'm not. I'm very responsible right now. I I left my story selection up, the Lord. <laughs> Because today is a when we worship and love him, our Lord and Savor, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Tigers, as of stream. House Fatal Frame. I want to play it, but I'm also a fucking coward, so maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Ah, what? Wait, that's Cordero ng We're listening to Amana. Asalangit. Pahi. I haven't been to in years. Somehow, I still remember all of the church songs. Gonna do something, Muna Broskis. Okay, bro, sheesh. For real, for real. Did you guys see that thing from, like, I think it was Ateneo, overheard in Ateneo? Someone. There was someone who legitimately asked why their teacher had for real at the end of their name it was a friar fr stands for friar it was like why is why is our teacher like garcia for real it's it's friar garcia my dude it's father garcia it's not for real our lady of dinagat let's go <laughs> ah for real for real Real for real. 
my teacher, Sir Garcia, for real. For real? <laughs> it's prior kasi ni ba? It's father. Someone asked why their teacher had like for real at the end of their name. <laughs> Gen Z moment. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I think that's just that person's problem and not like the entire generation. <laughs> for real, for real? Water, for real? I'm gonna see if I can look for that thing. For real, for real. Hydrate what? Palik TLE grade 1. <laughs> Theology. Theology. Don't worry, we can get back our Langit points. We can... I feel like Our Lady of Dinagat is actually going to be a sane story this time. <laughs> They're going to hell. It's fine. We're all, we're all gonna go there with him. So this is the tale of Our Lady of Tinagat from the Surigao region. Some 15 miles away from Surigao lies the small island of Tinagat, floating on the Pacific Ocean somewhere along the Philippines. Strange as it may seem, Tinagat is not frequented by typhoons like its neighboring islands. The old, folk, the old folks say that this is because the Immaculada Concepcion because of the Immaculada Concepcion, the town's patron saint. They believe that she protects them by using her flowing skirt to change the direction of the strong wind. Once again, my theory is there was actually a wind goddess in this area and then when religion came in, we're, they were like, okay, we're just gonna call her Maria so we can continue to worship her and then eventually we just became religious. Like, suddenly we just all believe that it's Maria. Anyway, once a nearby volcano erupted which rocked the ocean into tidal waves. The people were terrified but they prayed hard as they saw the huge waves rushing through the shore. Suddenly, there was something white that veiled the rolling waves and the sea was calm again. Yet, in spite of the goodness of this patron saint, the townspeople were becoming corrupt and evil. Oh no, they neglected to hear mass on Sundays. The men went to the cockpit, <laughs> cockpit, to the sabungan. The boys gambled and drank, and the women gossiped most of the time, neglecting their children. Oh no, the girls failed to honor the Lord's Day because they became lazy after dancing late Saturday nights. How dare these girls have fun on a weekend? That's bad. Jesus doesn't like that. Jesus doesn't like it when you have fun. Then, a strong typhoon struck the town. Coconut trees fell, houses were blown away, and many people were killed. The Dinagat nuns implored their patron saint's aid. The typhoon continued to blow for two days, but it gradually calmed down on the third day, which was a Sunday. That Sunday morning, everyone went to church to thank God and the Immaculada Concepcion and to repent their sins. To their surprise, they saw the Immaculada Concepcion drenched, sticking all over her, her skirt. Was Amor Seco? Wait, I need to Google what Amor Seco is. I don't know. <laughs> Amor Seco. Oh, okay, it's a type of flower. Okay, there we go. We are all going to hell. It's a miracle! The villagers cried. They firmly believed that it was her plea again to the Almighty that saved them from calamity. One old woman burst into tears saying, Oh my lady, it must have been you whom I saw walking last night in the raging storm crying. I, I don't have a good old lady voice. Sorry. Because I'm very young. From that time on, the Dinagat nuns avoided disappointing the lady. They became more pious and good. They never missed Sunday Mass. 
Soon, the people became very busy preparing for the town fiesta in honor of their patron saint. The older women taught the young ones to the, the different dances such as Moro Moro, Manobo dance, Yenawa also known as the devil dance, and other folk dances. Now I want to know what the Yenawa is. Participants in the zarzuela also rehearsed daily, supervised by older men because of course it has to be supervised by older men. Of course! Older men are bastions of morality, as we know, as we all know. Adam Levine, Bastion of Morality. One night, two days before the fiesta, a young and beautiful girl approached this woman called Tang Tina, a rich matron of Surigao. The girl explained that she was one of the participants in the dance to honor the Immaculada Concepcion during the fest fiesta in Dinagat. Could you borrow a jewel from Nang Tina? Nang Tina was kind and deeply pious. She readily gave the poor girl her jewel box for her to choose something that she liked. The girl selected a golden necklace with a locket on which was etched crucifix. The girl repeated her promise to Nang Tina to return it soon. As soon as the girl left, Nang Tina realized that she didn't even ask for the girl's name, and she felt foolish for lending a very precious thing to someone unknown to her. Alright, asado ingat! God bless. However, she hurriedly dismissed her fears and reproved herself for having no trust in such an innocent looking girl. Look, innocent looking girls we get away with a lot. I'm innocent looking. Besides, did she not promise to return it? Anyway, Nang Tina would also attend the fiesta and there she would surely meet the girl. On the eve of the fiesta, Nang Tina arrived in Dinagat. The town was bustling with many people, mostly pilgrims from different places. She stayed with Lola Anna, a devout old woman of Dinagat whose house was very near the Catholic church and the town plaza where the dances were to be held. Thank you for the hydrate redeem. So I'm gonna do. That afternoon, the dancers assembled in front of the church for the Vesper offering in honor of the lady. The lady being Immaculada Concepcion. Nang Tina strained her neck to look for the beautiful girl who borrowed her golden necklace. To her dismay, she could not find her. The girl would surely be there to dance the next day, right? Holy water, that's right, I drank holy tap water. Dawn of December 8 came, the day of the fiesta. The band woke the people up with a diana. Soon the church was filled. After the low and high masses, both of which Nang Tina attended, she secured for herself a place which commanded a good view of the dancers. The girl who borrowed her jewel was not one of them. She began to worry. Why had she not asked her name before handing over her jewel? Had she known her name, she could at least have inquired from friends about her. She left the dancers and prayed before the Immaculada Concepcion. She prayed that she might meet the girl and get the jewel back again. With tears rolling down her cheeks, she looked up to the statue to invoke her help. Then, to her joy and amazement, she saw the necklace hanging around the statue's neck. Peering closely at its face, she finally understood. It was the face of the girl who had borrowed her jewel. The next day, after the procession along the seashore, Tang Tina went back to Surigao. And that evening, she opened her jewel box to find that her necklace was among her jewels once more. Yesterday, she saw it worn by the Holy Virgin, and now it was in her box again. Nobody could have returned it that day before she arrived because 
the trip she took was the first to arrive in Surigao. It's a miracle! Yes, another miracle of the lady, the people of Dinagat conclude whenever they narrate Nang Tina's experience of long, long ago. And that was the tale of Our Lady of Dinagat, a version of Mama Mary of the Holy Virgin Mary, who I guess just wanted to look pretty for her fiesta, so she asked for a jewel from a very pious woman. And that makes three out of the five stories that I sort of kind of prepared for the stream. We have two more. We have one about Santo Nino. Well, actually, we have a lot of stories about Santo Nino. They're very short, so I kind of just want to read a selection of them. And one about Our Lady of Awa. Our, the story about Ang Lady, uh, I know, uh, Biglang, Biglang Awa. It's about the fight of a uh, cat Christian Filipino, Muslim Filipino. So, once again, might not have aged well, but here we are. That's part of our folk. I mean, it could be worse. I found like a Mama Mary short folk tale about how. When Edsa happened, both sides were praying and that's why no one fucking died. And I'm like, I don't think Satan prays, so. And if Satan fucking Satan. I'm actually trying to avoid those stories in telling, but no. Have folklore about people who were alive like fairly recently and that some folklore can be to explore history. I'm not just talking about former presidents. I mean, we have a lot of folklore also about like historical figures like Jose Rizal and Raja Sulay Napulapu and Andres Bonifacio and I just I've just promised myself that I'm not gonna talk about them. Para safe, iwas pusoy. Also, they're very long and I don't... I don't want to. Biglang awa sounds like what your professor does pass you his exam his class even may or may not have failed all of those exams let me just stretch story let's have the legend of the biglang awa it's a tale from the tagalog region where in the tagalog region i didn't research <laughs> i'm sure somewhere out there is the holy mary of biglang awa or sudden mercy but look look i'm only dressed as a nun i'm not a nun the last time i went to church was Wanna say pre-pandemic? Pre-pandemic. I don't think my cousin's virtual wedding counts. I don't think it counts. Sorry, cousin. Okay, so the legend of Piglang Awa. On top of the high hill stands the church and the convent which the people of my little town, oh, this is a first-person story, <laughs> love so much and prize as a treasure. 
they will always point to it with pride, saying, Look at our castle! Surrounded by massive walls with battlements and watchtowers and three big gates, the church and the convent attached to it really gave an idea of a medieval castle. How many times did this old structure overlooking the town in the valley protect the town's people attacked by their enemy? Yeah, um, it's totally Holy Mary's fault and I mean fault, Holy Mary that's protecting you and not like the big rocks. Yeah, yeah, totally. More than once under the shelter of its walls had our ancestors repelled the Moros who otherwise would have mercilessly ravaged the town and enslaved its inhabitants. Ah, they had also faith in our go in God and our virgin protected those good ancestors of ours, the old people would say in finishing the legend and afterwards going to non-religious character of modern times. That's a weird sentence. There is a story, however, which the old people of our town would often tell to inspire the youth with religious zeal. I hope you guys are also inspired by this tale. It's apparently inspiring. It's a legend about this particular church and convent. One bright morning of May, so the legend goes, more than 100 years ago, the town was alarmed by the hurried arrival of a man from the seashore who told that a fleet of swift prahos was sailing towards the town. The people, knowing how terrible the Moros were in battle, yet... Actually, they were. I mean, I'm not saying this as an insult. I mean... The caliber 45 gun was made because Muslim warriors in Mindanao during World War II, was it, with the Americans? When they get shot, they just like, oh, we're just gonna tie up this wound. Okay, we're gonna charge. So yeah, they were known as fierce warriors and led to the improvement of guns, I guess. It sounds bad. I'm gonna move on to read. So the people, knowing how terrible the warriors were, gathered their belongings and sought... Wait, gathered their belongings and sought their only place of refuge, the church and the convent. Within the convent with winding staircase and very narrow doors, the old men, women, and children were accommodated. While out in the ample square before the church, the young men made the huts and prepared to repel the attacks of the Muslim warriors. Just in time! The Capitan, who had managed the entering of everyone in town within the walls, had just ordered the closure of all the gates when the men in the watchtowers saw a great cloud of dust and cried out, The Moros! The Moros are coming! Into the unknown. At this frightful cry, every man ran to his post ready to defend the, his honor and liberty with his life. The onset of the warriors was dangerously vigorous. Their numbers were great and each man was fully armed because why wouldn't you charge fully armed to these places? Their spears and arrows rarely mixed, missed their mark and made sad havoc in the camp of the enemy. But the besieged did not despair, for they knew that they had their beloved ones safe inside a convent. And these people were praying for them once again prayer. The priest, too, making his rounds, inspired them with courage by his saintly words. It was with a heart full of thanksgiving that they saw the Muslims retreat, but alas, their ships stayed. Tired by the long attack and exhausted by the heat of the sun, the Moros encamped on the banks of the river running at the foot of the hill. The town capitan foresaw the enemy's movement scanning ahead. And so he placed a large force of his men on the north wall overlooking the river. There was an ominous lull of several hours, during which both sides repaired their lost strength and made new plans. At nightfall, movement was observed in the Moro camp. At midnight, the watchmen saw a herd of cattle approach the northern pass of the hill. They didn't sound the alarm, for they thought it was. No, it's only their own cattle left out in the meadows 
a precious booty booty <laughs> booty <laughs> a precious booty for the invaders how they wish that the animals would be allowed unmolested who would molest the cows to proceed on their way to the gate that they may furnish future food for the besieged but how strange it is for cattle to be together in such a large number and come up to the hill in their own accord said the watchman but before they were aware of it a large number of moros were coming up the hill and some were even scaling the walls the alarm was given too late but by this watchman who was very distracted by the mumus yes not the mumus those on guard in the walls tried to prevent prevent the advance of the enemy the reserve guard was called and at last everyone had to fight but in vain the moros were constantly gaining ground dawn came only to eliminate a battlefield strewn with the dead and the wounded the town's people were beginning to give up hope their ranks were so thinned down and they were so tired now the women at the convent were panicking mothers clasped their babies closer to their bosoms as if wanting to protect their tender little bodies with their own daughters embraced their aged mothers and tried to assuage the latter's fear although they too were full of misgivings the old men gathered in groups and prepared each other thank you for the follow zephyr and prepared other for the worst that might come in the midst of all this confusion the voice of the priest was heard let us say the rosary to our virgin of biglang awa and she will intercede to god to give our men courage and success because this is a religious folktale therefore prayers always work with trembling lips everybody answered the ave marias of the priest with what fervor they prayed would the virgin grant their request in the meantime the men at the walls were fighting fighting with that vigor that despair lends to those whose hearts it's it enters the moros though much diminished in number seemed to be attended by success and the town's people were on the point of giving up when to their great astonishment they saw the moros retreat and run pell-mell down the hill they could not make out the cause of this unexpected flight what had they seen what tactics have the christians adopted to bring about such great success ah but perhaps the retreat was only a strategy but they would be on guard now leaving for a few a few at the walls the priest called all to the church to give thanks to god for this marvelous salvation while they were praying a cry of halt started them but soon after a soldier came in and said that there were people outside who were asking to be admitted within they say that they were from lai lai a shore district of the town they had been captured by the moros but had been able to escape during their hasty flight on being asked if they know where the moros fled an old man answered yes maginoong kapitan we saw a woman come out of the gate pointing to the northern one and she carried a reed and was followed by many people the moro chief laughing at such a feeble leader as the christians had struck her but no sooner had he done this that he fell to the ground senseless beaten by the reed of the lady who after that brandished her light weapon from right to left and killed many okay i like i like this virgin mary now she murdered a lot of people <laughs> i did not expect this from a woman named our lady of biglang awa or our maiden lady of sudden mercy <laughs> i mean it was sudden which part is the mercy i don't know the warriors seeing that the chief and the leaders fall and many people coming upon them fled in haste the shore and left us on the road 
Who was the woman? was the question everyone asked. The bravest of all the women said that she had not dared go out of the convent. Miracle! Miracle of God! It is our virgin who has saved us! cried a devout girl. Yeah, it's the virgin. It's not just some angry short woman with a stick, but okay. They all went inside the church and there amid a great silence. The, pri the priest ascended the altar steps and reverently approached the image of the Virgin, Our Lady of Biglang Awa. Then he turned to the people and showed them the mud that stained the Virgin's skirt and the cut deep on her nose. The people, overwhelmed by the great kindness shown to them by their patroness, could not contain themselves with joy and burst forth with, forth with a song to praise Our Virgin Mary. The next day, the Virgin was taken out of the church and placed within a niche at the gate from which she had been seen to come out to save those who called for her help and protection by beating them up with a stick. Even today, the image is to be seen where it was placed centuries ago and candles incessantly burn before her. The people kneel and bow before her on passing and a novenario is still celebrated in her honor to commemorate the wonderful rescue of the town. And also, they never explained the herd of cows that just happened to pass by. And that is the legend of Our Lady of Iglang Awa, a version of the Virgin Mary who just decided to descend down one day to beat up invading warriors with a stick. I know I didn't expect this story to I I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. That leaves us with just one set of stories now about the Santo Nino. But first let me then take a water break. Take a lot of water break. Actually let me just take like one minute break as we all chill the so five beats of Amanami by Emmanuel Fabella on me. Ran out of Models acting out. Oh no, the devil has got me. I bless po ako. Uh, God bless. Yawa bless you. Jesus Christ bless you. Please, oh, happy ba? May you be visited by the Blessed Virgin with her very big stick. For our last set of stories we're still a cool stream thank you very much do you feel holy now do you want to go to church now let's all go to church tomorrow no i can't i'm gonna help but purposes of i am seeing the lag in okay so for our last set of skills we're gonna talk about santon so that the, I uh, know, the Jesus Nendoroid, Santo Nino. <laughs> I don't know how to describe Santo Nino. People who have never seen Santo Nino. A baby Jesus statue that you can see all over the Philippines. It's not exactly a baby, it's like a toddler. It's like a chibi. Let's just say it's chibi Jesus. Santo Nino is chibi Jesus. He's like the number one most popular Jesus merch in the Philippines. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to explain. Antonino. 
But okay, so of Santo Nino Tales, uh, the so-called Black Santo Nino of Cebu. It's a Santo Nino that was made from very very dark wood. Is apparently has the has the reputation of being a prankster. Yeah, that's our Jesus. Cool pranks, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So this these are a bunch of short tales from Cebu. There are many stories concerning the antics of Santo Nino of Cebu that has circulated far and wide. Some of the most interesting ones were painstakingly recorded by a researcher named Mrs. Concepcion Briones whose parents and grandparents have lived in Cebu's Parian district where such tales are rampant. Uh, so there's this one tale about a fish peddler. There was once a peddler of fish. Most often of the taste, uh, who most often sold a very, very delicious dangit. And he often passed by San Agustin Church early morning. I don't need to be famous. We are all famous in the eyes of the Lord. Femax, how do I ban him? Okay, anyway, thank you, Illumi. God bless him. God bless Femax. <laughs> so there was this peddler of fish who often passed by San Agustin Church in early morning and he would usually find a short, dark-skinned, curly-haired boy just asking to buy some fish. Often the boy would tell the peddler, uh, Our prior is still sleeping, so just come back for the payment for the fish later on. And then later in the day, the fish peddler would come back to the church to ask for the payment, and the good fathers, the good priests would shake their heads. Um, Nobody here among us or our boys have bought any fish from you. Also, please don't read anything into the way I said our boys. When the peddler insisted, the sacristan mayor would go up to the glass case of Santo Nino at the main altar and there he would find a fresh string of dangit lying at the foot of an image. Yes, among us. The priest usually paid the peddler with a smile and indulgently chuckled over the pranks of their very naughty Santo Nino. We robbed a fish peddler of his fish. Cool prank, Jesus! And that was one of the many cool pranks of the Santo Nino of Cebu. There's another prank that involves two sacristans at the convent of San Agustin Church. The sacristan mayor of the convent is said to have found the dress of the holy child wet. Oh no, the dress is wet. Did, did they just rip off a fish peddler? Yes, uh, Santo Nino just ripped off a fish peddler. Fortunately, the priests paid the fish peddler, but you know, the Santo Nino still did it. Did it. Gaslighting the fish peddler. The priest almost gaslighted the fish peddler. Yeah, like we don't have any children that would buy fish from you. Oh Jesus, it was Jesus all along. Haha, <laughs> funny Jesus. Funny prank, child Jesus. So another prank by Antonino involved two sacristans. One day, the sacristan mayor, or the head sacristan, found the dress of the holy child wet and having the distinct smell of the tea morning. Yes, smelled the dress. Of course he would. And he would often uh, scold this holy child for his nighttime wanderings around the nearby seashore. Another sacristan was very partial to tuba and was often drunk. This is a sacristan. Sacristans aren't that old. They aren't above 18. This teenager is always drunk. Good job. And he's the church okay. Every morning when he started fixing the Santo Nino tubes, he had to pick out painstaking and meticulously all the amor seco which invariably stuck to the child's dress. 
The tubat drinking sa Kristan, they said, often grumbled to the holy child this way. Pastilan, gasuroy-suroy ka na asad no. Mayo ra ba og musuroy ka imo akong dadan og kwartang pagpalit og tuba? Or translated, My goodness, so you've gone wandering around again. It would be well if every time you went around you'd buy me some money for tuba, which is a kind of alcohol. Tuba is, is tuba rice or is tuba coconut? I keep forgetting. Tuba is rice, right? I'm gonna Google. I can't stop until I find out. Tuba. Wine. Oh, it's coconut. Tuba is coconut wine. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so this Sakristan complained in front of child Jesus Christ that he wished... How Jesus Christ would give him money or coconut wine. Whereupon, after cleaning the image's robes, the sacristan would find a few coins at its feet to buy the much needed beverage. So, cool prank, Jesus Christ, enabling this underage alcoholic by giving him money for alcohol. Thank you, Jesus. And then there's another story about how. This chibi Jesus Christ joined the army in 1942. That would be World War II. At around 1942, the Holy Child went so far as to attempt to enlist in the army. So the devout and credulous still claim. One day at the headquarters of Fort San, San Pedro, Colonel C.F. Sharp of the United States, States Army was said to have been surprised by a short, dark-skinned, curly-haired boy claiming that he wanted to enlist in the use of a in order to defend Cebu. This is some weird-ass propaganda. Of course, the child was turned down. He's a child. News of this incident later spread around the city of Cebu and was considered another cool prank, Jesus, of the very naughty Santo Nino. Of Cebu. So that is our tales about the Santo Nino Cebu. He tried to rip off a fish peddler, he enables the alcoholism of underage teenagers, and also he almost joined the army. Let's see. What else can we talk about the Santo Nino? No, the cool prank Jesus really is a highlight of Santo Nino though. Okay. How about the Santo Nino as a provider of rice? I feel like this isn't a cool prank Jesus. But anyway. Just so we could go back to talking about the Santo Nino. It's like a figure. Hopefully the story that I haven't read before would restore his name and honor. So this is a tale about the Santo Nino as a provider of rice. One day, a priest known as Feril Feril Justo, I mean Father Justo, was called to the mountains to hear the confession of a poor old woman who was dying. Oh, this, is, this tale is off to a good start. As soon as he arrived, he immediately heard her confession and afterwards gave her extreme uncle. Dying woman said to the priest, Padre, as you can see, I am a very poor old woman. Very soon I'm going to die. It's the Popo. The Popo is out to get me for my crimes. Turned her head towards the Senor. Yeah, it's the 5 0, which comprises all the wealth and the Senor improvised altar above her head and continued. All I can give you, father, for real, for real, sheesh, to repay you is an image of the Senor, which comprises all the wealth that I have in this world. Because uh, in case you're not Filipino and you're listening to this right now, the Chibi Jesus, I mean the image, the statue of Santo Nino is a mainstay in a lot of Filipino houses. Thank you for the follow. Tears cool. Thank you. So it makes sense that this old poor woman 
would also have a statue of GB Jesus, a uh, Jesus Nendoroid on in her house. So the priest followed her glance and his eyes fell on a dirty and almost unidentifiable image lovingly placed on the altar. The old woman told the priest that for years she had been all alone and had no relatives to take care of her, only her Chibi Jesus, her Jesus merch. When she was still strong, she would hire herself out to do odd jobs for her neighbors. When she was short of food, she used to tell her Señor Santo Niño, Señor Santo Niño, today I did not have enough rice to eat. Please help me. And the holy child has never failed her, she said. Soon, a neighbor's child would bring some sweet potatoes, bananas, or rice and tell her that his parents want, wanted her to do some more chores for them for half a day or that they wanted her for a few days in order to help them dry copra. This feels like there's just this random child that's helping a grandma. I'm sorry, is this really Jesus? I mean, oh no, sorry to doubt you, Jesus. You're, you're the best. Best prankster, Jesus Christ. Then she fell ill. And the time came when she did not even have a handful of rice for which to make porridge. She placed her life entirely in the hands of child Jesus. And everyday food prepared by her good neighbors never failed to arrive. May look, maybe her neighbors just really love her because she is an important part of their community. Okay, it's, it's the Jesus. The old woman died soon after she had told the priest this story. And the father brought the image of Santo Nino home with him. And that is the tale of the Santo Nino who provides rice. Santo Nino did that. But, you know, friendly name. Santo Nino rice. Find one. There's a Santo Nino that takes a bath. Never mind, it's, a, it's just a child that thing. Proposal. Yep, I ran out of Santo Nino stories. That was it. That was it. So that would be our tales, our folk tale regarding religious figures for the day. If you have any requests, the book that I have open for. Uh, folklore t for religious tales is the same book that has the monster tales. So if you hear about Aswangs, Capre, I don't have to look far. I don't have to. They're here. They're all. The book that I'm reading is part like I certain. Out in eyes one print. And you. Uh, there's a lot of books in the series. Uh, the tales that I read right now are from the Legends compilation. There's also book tales, a book about myths, a book about epics. I also just recently the book about the riddle, so we have a book battle okay how about some mermaid lore okay so i recently came upon some mermaid lore from a book the uh, el folklore philippine by isab i bought my uh, i found some mermaid lore that makes them kind of like tikbalang I mean, like the tikbalang in which you can enslave them, which is sorry.
Well, this isn't exactly a story. This is more of like a compilation tour. Balitao and... It seems that the Litao was the Anito of the Sea. This is from the Ilocos region, by the way. Probably put story title. So we don't mistake kinds of beliefs for beliefs that were by the entire film. So in the Ilocos region, there's the Litao, which was the Anito of the sea and the rivers. And they were not called Sirena, a term introduced to the Philippines by the Spaniards, a fact confirmed by the same Ilocano tradition. Besides, Sirena is a Spanish noun and does not have an Ilocano equivalent. According to the Ilocanos, the mermaid was a beautiful girl who lived with her mother in a hut near the banks of the river, water reached up to the porch of the head hut. One day, when they were sewing, the needle fell and the girl stopped to look for it. But the mother told her daughter to leave the lost needle alone because the Litao, or the male god of the waters, who possessed supernatural powers would do bad things to her. I can't say the word on Twitch. But yes. However, the girl seeing the needle at the bottom of the clear water stooped to pick it up when the mother was not looking. And hardly had she put her pretty feet in the water, she was swallowed by the current. Since then, she acquired the power to enchant. The Ilocano mermaid is different from the one described by a collaborator of this book full of the collaborator of a different Spanish book, Folklore Andaluz. Many of the characters of Ilocano superstitions come from the ancient Anito, Litao. The Litao lost its importance since the introduction of the term Sirena in Ilocano folklore, and today it's practically forgotten. According to what the author heard, in Vigan, the Litao is a small man who lived in the branches of the bamboo trees along the riverbanks. He is the husband of the mermaid and the one who gave her supernatural powers which she now possesses. The... wait... What an interesting combination of fables from the Spaniards and the Ilocanos. The Augustinians Buzeta and Bravo say that Filipinos believe, believe that it is impossible to live without a wife so they gave a god a goddess. I don't think that's real. This compilation was written by a Spanish man how many years ago? He lived in 1864. He was born in 1864. This is a very old In The Ilocanos say that the mermaid lives in a magnificent gold palace which is like a submarine located in the northern part of Palacio Episcopal. What is this random Spanish word? Palacio Episcopal. In this palace, there is a furnace where the Queen of Waters lives. In all the Ilocano villages, even among the learned, no one was heard to dare scream or talk about the mermaid near the river for fear that she will come out and kill him. So Filipino mermaids, fucking murders. The mermaid has long thick hair that reaches down to the floor. She usually goes to town to hunt for human victims. She goes about disguised as a beautiful woman, enticing people to go with her to the river. The water, her sinister ally, suddenly swirls and bubbles. With her sharp nails, he kills her victim. However, one who has not maligned her nor take, talked ill of her is spared, entertained and gifted with exquisite delicacies and presents. To this favored and innocent captive, she reveals the secret of the past. It is said that a woman was taken to the mermaid's magnificent mansion by a cetacean, and upon arriving there, introduced her to his distinguished sovereign was given her the order the mermaid appeared and showered them with kindness 
telling them not to fear anything and they would not be killed for they were good and virtuous. As a result, the mermaid befriended them and made life pleasant for them. So, Ilocano mermaids, sometimes they're murderous little shits, sometimes they just want friends. Uh, good luck. It feels like a gacha. Oh, you can when you're going to get like murdered or when you're gonna get help. The captive, however, longed to see her family and ask permission to go home from the mermaid. This sounds like Urashi Mataro. This was granted on condition that she must return. Otherwise, she would die by drowning. But the ungrateful woman did not return. And fearful of having broken her promise, she never went to bathe in the river or the sea but at a well. Nevertheless, she still drowned and died in it. You can drown on any body of water, my dear. Sometimes people say that the mermaid can be seen walking behind the carriage of the Virgin Mary in a procession, majestic in her serenity and with her gaze fixed on the ground. Once again, my theory is these goddesses just got replaced by the Virgin Mary one day and I think they're perfectly fine with it. Lunod sa isang basong tubig. I mean, you can choke on a glass of water and try hard enough. When the mermaid comes forth from the bottom of the water, divides and gives way for people to pass as the sea did for Moses, according to the Bible. Moses, possibly a mermaid. <laughs> a mermaid has fishes as her maids. She is beautiful, but she has an unpleasant smell of rotten fish. Oi! That's racist. On her head lies the supernatural power, with encantador. If someone can pull out a strand of her hair, she will pass the virtue of enchantment or omnipotence onto that person. Her hair is as strong as a metallic net that can wrap and drag her. Uh oh, stinky! No! Iligo po ako araw araw, linggo linggo, buwan buwan, minu minuto. In spite of living at the bottom of her magnificent roof, you can hear all kinds of talk about her mermaids, the marites of the sea. I relate her deeds, I could fill many pages, so I will only tell you what is interesting. God damn it, this is why mermaid lore got lost forever. In the 1850s, news that the mermaid had become inactive had become inactive and that no person has died of drowning since. Every dawn, the mermaid appeared north of the Cathedral of v Vigan. Several young people decided to meet and welcome her. How brave they were! The hour and the day came. The mermaid probably knew the purpose of her adversaries and she approached them. How horrible! The young men who advanced retreated with the hairs, their hair standing on end. In the end, they were able to get near the maiden and capture her. But, she turned out to be just a simple maiden waiting for her lover. So good, congrats guys, you terrorized and sent maiden because you thought she was a mermaid. GG, well played. Nga, buong buhay naliligo malansa pa rin kasi nilabas nyo sa dagat kung hindi nyo nilalabas sa dagat yan nalalans that's it for guys have any other requests I think I can go for one more and then I'm going to say valor I mean ah <laughs> uh... I'm going to stop. Like Valorant. Hello? After this, we are going to pray. Yes, we're going to pray. All is well. Ah, not play Valorant? Okay, okay. We're gonna pray Valorant. Pray. Pali po yung nasabi ko. Sabi ko pray. Pray po. Pray. Pagdadasal natin yung immortal soul ni Omen. Who has no chill.
And I wish I could hear the ama namin na. Dalitao mermaid? Yeah, we I just talked about ah Dalitao and the mermaid. Dalitao is what the old Ilocanos called the river god. He, short man. He is a short kid. I'm a go naka in lods. Okay, lods, for real, for real. Sheesh. He's out. Bounce na ako, Lods. God bless. God bless, Hawaiian. God bless. Okay, I'm gonna look for like an un because I feel way too rich now. Feels weird. Feels weird to be dressed as. Nagindarang gabi din, Ivan Karai. I'm about to end the stream. I'm just looking for another folktale. Possibly about. Let's talk about a folktale from. About monsters this time because I feel like I've talked about the Virgin Mary enough. But somehow, the mermaid story still loop the Virgin Mary. Okay, lang, okay. Lang. You can still watch the VOD. You can still listen to Prankster Jesus. Full prank, Chibi Jesus. I can find one more. Do you guys want a story about fairies? A story about. I mean, the Encanto. Do you want a story about the San Telmo? Story about. Thank you for the stretch, Redeem. Also, when are we getting a San Telmo beat? It looks like my model is dislocating her neck. <laughs> oh, these are ghost stories. San Telmo, I haven't known the origins of it. San Telmo. It got its name from Saint Elmo's fire. Just a horrible fire that, if you follow, apparently could lead to treasure or could get you lost. It's, it's a will always find something. This we found it. Why is there a story about a super dog? I just found the ghost story section of of my folklore book. I think I know what I'm gonna do for. Wow, that there's a lot. I think I know what I'm going to do. for October. I just heard what when blood is spilled and then it rains as Antelmo is. Oh, nice! That's so cool. Okay, I found three Santelmo. Yep. No, I found four Santelmo tape. Let's go. Let's talk about the Santil. Okay, so our first San Telmo tale is from Oriental Mindoro. It's about Mamang Ando, who was a seaman. Plural seaman. He regularly shipped agricultural products from Mindoro to Luzon. He was skillful in his work because this has been his occupation since he was a young man. At dawn one morning, he set sail on his batel as usual. He had a load full of copra, palay, and bananas. 
His compadre, Mamang Ente, and some crew members were with him. Because they were all sailing against the wind, they were making slow progress. One night after supper, a strong wind began, began to blow. Big waves started rolling. No star was in sight. The crew members became alert. After a while, they saw a light from afar. Mangando, said one of them. We're about to meet something. See that light over there? That might be a Santelmo, said another. You might get into trouble if that touches our outrigger. Oy, compadre, Mang Enteng interrupted. What exactly is the Santelmo? So, Mamang Ando explained. The Santelmo is said to be the souls of people lost at sea. Their souls become walls of fire at sea. When the weather is bad, these balls of fire appear and some find something to cling to. If not repelled, they will set the boat on fire. While Mamang Ando was explaining, the fire that was approaching the boat was getting bigger. At first glance, the fire looked red, but later it looked a little blue. As it neared, the fire blazed even brighter. Soon it had alighted on the sail. Mang Ando got a can of vinegar and splashed some of it on the fire. He told the men to get some salt and sprinkle it on the sails. I thought they were in the sea. Why is salt hard to find? Afterwards, they took poles and started beating the fire. You can beat the fire? While at the same time sprinkling vinegar, salt, and water on it. Physics does not exist. The fire gradually dimmed and finally disappeared. In a little while, the weather also improved. A favorable wind blew, so the boat sailed faster. The people in the boat who had witnessed the mysterious occurrence were silent for a long time. One seemed silently thanking God for their deliverance. All of the San Filmo tales that I'm seeing are from the sea. Okay, let's have... Ah, they're all from the sea. At least in this collection. Okay, I'll have... This was the time before physics was invented. Okay, that's why all could steal, eat up fire, and sprinkle salt on them. Okay, there's a Kinerai A Santilmo story. It's from Antike. Long ago, it was believed by our forefathers that fishermen were afraid to go fishing, especially at night. When they are out in sea, the Santelmo will come near to them. The Santelmo knew how to scare persons who were at sea. If they ever trapped fishermen, they drowned them. Wait. Good luck, I know, right? I don't know this tale. There were even a number of men who were found dead because of the Santelmo. The same thing happened in rivers. Once a lady rode in a boat, she met the Santelmo. She was about to escape, but it was too late. She was caught by this evil thing. How? I don't know. It's just a ball of fire. She was drowned by the ball of fire. Physics wasn't invented yet. But there was once this old man who encountered the same. When the Santelmo was about to run after him, he took off his pants, stood firmly, and faced the Santelmo. <laughs> Look at my penis! <laughs> Look at my tite and tremble, Santelmo! <laughs> no, no doubt the Santelmo vanished. And that is how people learn the remedy of getting away from the San Telmo. <laughs> okay, I'm ending the stream there. That's the last tale. When you face a San Telmo, when you face a glowing ball of fire, all you have to do is pull down your pants <laughs> and assert dominance and it will go away. <laughs> it will go away. <laughs> That's it.
that's it ending the stream there that's our last tale that's how you get rid of that evil spirit thank you for the wisdom how to assert dominance go away demon unzip pants <laughs> pull it down depots <laughs> We depose the demons away! That's how we do it! Okay, let's raid someone. Is. Uh huh. Okay, sure, let's raid. Let's raid Pantal, who's playing Slime Rancher 2. Uh, what, what's our raid message? Uh. Pantelmo, go away, raid! I got the ball. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I want to change my ra raid message just for today. If you are subscribed, this is our raid message. If you are not subscribed, this is our raid message. I still want to use the shock fish. Because that is how I felt when I saw, when I read that story. <laughs> Okay, and a Pental Paragona who is playing Slime Rancher. I guess announcements first. I'm about to hit 300 followers, so if you could hop on to my Discord, we're planning a 300 follower karaoke in which you guys get to choose what I get to sing. There's a special channel there, so please feel free to join us. And then I'm probably going to take a light week next week going to try and find the lamb and also this game called the confines which is a cute story about small animals that live in a village nothing wrong could possibly happen there all right see you next time my alam oh no it's it's made for mature audiences Pagindarang ka. Bye.